GetTent.com. This video covers the setup installation of a 40 foot wide by 70 foot long by 21 foot high Crestline double truss arch shelter with vertical sides. The shelter must be installed on firm ground, not on swamp or a site that is soft or wet. Ensure all components are present by checking with the required hardware prior to installation. Allow a minimum of four days to complete installation. Square your site with a string or chalk line prior to installation. Lay out the frame parts on the ground in the approximate location that they will be when the frame is assembled. Reference the parts and minimum staking layout in the corresponding product manual. Bolt ratchets to base flanges. Attach one tie-down ratchet to each base flange along the sidewall length of the structure. Use two bolts for each ratchet to secure it to the base flange. Assemble the arches and lay them on the ground first. Do not erect the arches until all arches are assembled. Connect the arches by inserting the hexagon bolts with washers and nuts through the pre-drilled holes in the frame members. Please notice the arch sections. Sections for the front, middle, and back arches are not the same. Check with the product manual to ensure the correct parts and placement. Each arch consists of one top roof truss section, two roof curving truss sections, two roof curving truss sections at shoulder height, two sidewall truss sections, and two base plates. Erect the first arch using ropes. Tie and secure the ropes to a heavy object to secure the arch in a standing position temporarily. Once lifted, hold the base flanges. Assembling the roof purlins. Immediately after erecting the first arch, erect the second arch in the same way. Connect the two erected arches using the roof purlin and horizontal tubes. Secure the roof purlin tube in place using carriage bolts and nuts. The second arch should be assembled with the base plate so the wind brace support can be connected. Assembling the wind brace supports. Insert the tube clip around the interior arch. The tube clip is movable to ensure the proper position. Install the wind brace support that connects the front arch to the first interior arch. The wind braces give the arch assembly strength as a unit. Bolt each end of the wind brace support to secure. Lay the remaining arches on the ground. Install the other arch assemblies in the same manner. Overlap pinched ends of the roof purlins onto the same carriage bolts inside the frame assembly. Check the entire frame assembly so that it is square and plump. Adjust the wind braces and roof purlins as necessary to bring the frame into plumb. Tighten the frame bolts adequately. Install the concrete anchors. Begin by measuring to ensure the base flanges are square and the arches are plumb in all directions. Drill three holes in the concrete that are aligned with the holes in the base flange. Hammer the anchor stud through the base flange and drill hole, leaving room at the top for the bolt. Place the washer and bolt on the anchor stud and tighten, repeating at remaining holes. Install the wind stabilizer cables and turn buckles. On each side of the frame, between the first and last two groups of arches, on each first and last arch of the roof, and on the front and back panel frame, cables with turnbuckles are provided to align and strengthen the frame. After installing all cables with cable clamps, tighten the turnbuckles slightly to adjust the arches vertically and to add rigidity. Assemble the front and back arch framework. Install any remaining wind stabilizer cables. Install the roof cover. Unpack the cover and lay it parallel to the frame on one side. Insert the tensioning tube on one side, then cut small slits in the pocket and attach ropes to the tube. Use multiple ropes that have been looped over the top of the frame. Pull the cover over the frame carefully without being snagged or stressed on any parts of the frame. Have a person or persons inside the frame on a ladder or lift to assist in moving the roof cover over the frame. This will ensure the cover will be installed without any damage. Using the ropes provided, lace the cover's grommet flap around the main frame front and back arch pieces. Start in the middle of each arch and lace toward each side. Add or shorten rope length by tying pieces together or cutting as necessary. Do not over tighten the lacing as this may pull out grommets. 
After the roof overlacing is adjusted evenly across the grommet flap, go back and readjust. At this point, the main cover can be pulled taut enough to take all excess material and wrinkles out of the cover. Repeat these steps two to three weeks after assembly is complete and the roof cover has had a chance to stretch out over the frame completely. Fasten the roof cover by inserting the remaining tensioning tube. Place a plastic cap on each end of the tube. Make small cuts approximately 2 inches high by 3 inches wide using a scissors in the front cover pocket for the ratchet tie down strap to go through. Draw the outline of the cuts according to the position of the ratchet. Cuts should be made right on the ratchet locations. Loop the band for the tie down ratchet around the tensioning tube through the cuts on the pocket of the roof cover. Pull the bands through the reel of the ratchet and tension the band. Tension the cover of the frame from side to side by taking up the slack in the tie bands using the ratchet mechanisms, tightening the cover. Evenly adjust the ratchets on both sides of the roof to take out the wrinkles. Do not fully tighten yet. Leave adequate slack so that the cover can be adjusted front to back. Assemble the front cover by securing the front cover to the arch panel using the ropes provided. Once the cover is installed, the roof edge flap should be tightened and tied off. Begin by pulling the remaining roof cover over the frame arch, so that the rope pocket is over the edge of the frame. Tie off the rope that goes through the rope pocket on one side. The rope ties off to the loops that are located on the base flange corner. Moving to the other side, begin to pull the rope. Hold the rope in hand and push down on the bottom of the rope with your foot. Pull the rope tight and tie off to the welded loop on the base flange. As you are pulling the edge rope, it will be necessary to adjust the excess material that will collect along the rope. Adjust the material so that it is not bunched up and it does not pull the roof cover to one side or the other. Once the front is complete, repeat this process on the rear cover. Mechanical Door Installation Install main door pulleys, left and right, over the door on each side of the door beam. Mount the winch mechanism to the front panel lower beam. Slide the bottom door dropping tube into the bottom horizontal fabric pocket on the door cover. Then slide the six remaining door dropping tubes into the remaining horizontal fabric pockets in the door cover and use the self-tapping screws to secure the door cover to the dropping tube. From the bottom of the door tracks, Gently raise and slide one door dropping tube into the tracks. Then feed the other remaining door dropping tubes into the door track. Lace the top of the door panel through the grommets and around the frame. Attach the steel wire that leads the door winching assembly to the bottom of the door dropping tubes. The winch assembly has a long and a short steel cable secured to it. Feed the end of the shorter of the two cables through the lower roller on the double pulley at the top of the door assembly track closest to the winch assembly, and then down through the holes in the bottom door dropping tube on the left hand side of the door. When the steel cable goes down through the hole in the bottom dropping tube, tie a knot in the steel wire so that it cannot pass back through the hole. For the longer winch assembly route, Lead the end of the longer steel cable through the upper roller of the double pulley on the near door track and then through the single roller on the door track farthest from the winch assembly, then down through the bottom door dropping tube. When the steel cable goes through the hole in the bottom of the door dropping tube, tie a knot in the steel cable. The door can now be opened or closed by operating the winch assembly. Raise and lower the door several times to be certain door tubes are not binding on the track. Lubricate if necessary. For more information on fabric structures and shelters, visit GetTent.com.